Today we're looking at expanding brackets using the perfect squares method. So last lesson we looked at this dot system where if I had a in bracket a plus b times in bracket a minus b, I could abbreviate that to a squared minus b squared or a squared plus b squared depending on what the combination is. Today we're going to look at the perfect square method. So today's learning intention is to expand algebraic expressions using this perfect squares method. What is the perfect squares method? I'm glad you asked. Perfect squares are something that has the form of a plus b all squared or a minus b all squared. And we can use the rule for them. If we have a plus b all squared, remember that's the same as in brackets a plus b times in brackets a plus b. So it's a duplicate of the same thing. If we FOIL it, we get this a squared plus ab plus ab plus b squared, which is just our standard FOIL system, nothing exciting there. That then shortens into a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, which maybe you're starting to see a pattern here. The rule is that you square the first number, you double the product of the insides, and then you square the last number. So we've got a squared, a squared, two lots of the, the product. So a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. That is the perfect square rule. If you want to demonstrate it using the areas that we talked about last time, Let's say we've got our rectangle again, where one length is a plus b, and the other length is a plus b. So in this side, it's basically exactly the same as what we saw before, but it's now a square, not a rectangle. So instead of a plus b and c plus d, they're exactly the same. The overall area is length times width, right? So it's a plus b times a plus b, which is a plus b squared. However, if we break it into its four smaller rectangles, we would have this one, which is a times a, a squared. We'd have this one times this one, so a, b. This is a, b, and this is b squared. And when we add them all together, we get a squared plus a, b plus a, b, 2 a, b, plus our b squared, and we end up with what we started with. So it can be shown using this area calculation, which you can also apply because the last topic we talked about was measurement and area, so it makes sense. So the simple way to think of it is perfect square rule. If you have something all squared in brackets, square the first term, twice the product of the terms, and square the last term. And that is the perfect square method. Let's have a go at some practice for these. So all of these are perfect squares. As we get further down, you'll see that we've got a perfect square plus a perfect square. So you'll need to use that process individually and then add and simplify all of the like terms. Answers will be up in five seconds. Yeah, buddy! So check your answers above. See how you went. If there's something that you got wrong and you're not sure, you know what to do. Check with someone in your team. Come speak to me before moving on. Next set we're going to look at is not quite a perfect square in a way. I mean, when you think about it, we've got x plus 1 times x squared plus 3x plus 2. So how are we going to do this? First it says to expand and then it says to simplify it down again. So if we look at this, we're not trying to factorize this out just yet. We'll do that later on when we do quadratics. For now, we just want to expand these out and go from there. So how is it going to work? The x plus 1 is multiplied by everything inside. So it's an x plus 1 times this, it's an x plus 1 times this, and it's an x plus 1 times this. So when we first do this bracket, or this um, variable, we're going to have x times x squared, and we're going to have 1 times x squared. So we're going to have x cubed plus x squared. Then we move on to the next one. We've got x times 3x, 3x squared, plus 1 times 3x, 3x. And then the last one will give us 2 times x, 2x, 2 times 1, 2. And then we combine it all together to simplify all the terms out. So have a go at these questions. Answers will be up in 5 seconds. Yeah, buddy! As usual, have a look at the answers. Make sure that that agrees with what you got. See if you can find a shorter way to do this. Can we use a perfect square system here? Can we find sort of some sort of shortcut to foiling it? I'm curious to know how you went about solving this one. Time for a success check. Ask yourself, can I quickly and accurately expand algebraic expressions using the perfect squares method? So do you know what you're looking for to identify a perfect square? 
And then once you have, are you confident in how to actually expand, factorize, and simplify using that method? If the answer is yes, you're killing it, you know what to do, go on to the next lesson. If the answer is no, that's okay, we can work on that. You know what to do still, speak to someone in your group, speak to me, let's get that fixed before we move on. You can do it!